back to our presentation of the grasshopper lies heavy. Uh, it's an adaptation of an adaptation of the Amazon series based on Philip K. Dick's uh, novel uh, entitled The Man in the High Castle. Uh, we're the good guys, we're not the Nazis, yada, yada, yada. We'll take us to court later. With us tonight is our usual crew. We got Emma playing, um, oh, what's his name? It's the newest dude, Charles Davis. We have Sim playing Henry Winters and Ruth. Uh, Wolf is going to be played um, uh, is going to be played by Matt. Zypher uh, is not with us uh, today. He's uh, has fallen ill, and we wish him wish him the best. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So, as this scene opens, you see Charles Davis, and on his left-hand side, a police officer clad in blue. They're surrounded by police cruisers and yellow tape that says, Police line, do not cross. It's a windy morning, about 9 o'clock in the morning, December 30th in New York City and a rather unexpected shooting has happened just outside a downtown hotel and the shooting happened in the midst of a order for all citizens and non-emergency personnel to stay indoors on the day before the Yarnall celebration and so this uh this is very out of the ordinary it's being met with an extraordinary response by uh, both uh, the GNR and the local uh, law enforcement. And um, Mr. Davis steps underneath the police tape and looks up at the hotel. And next to him is is, uh, is Officer Weber. And I'll let you take it away, Emma. So this is after I originally arrived on scene at the end of last session or yeah. okay pick you up from the exact same spot okay all right officer weber what do you think we need to question some people see what they saw maybe see where dick ran off to officer weber looks around the scene he sees the place cordoned off. He sees out in front of the hotel they have at least six GNR officers and, and helmets and uh, submachine guns standing guard. Well, well, we got to go in there and question them. And it's quite clear they're not going to let anybody get away. You're in charge here, sir. Just tell me what to do and I'll make it happen. <laughs> He kind of gives a light smile as he smokes his cigarette, looking around. Yeah, let's let's head inside, gather some information, see what we can muster together. Maybe get a little bit of a heading as to uh, where he disappeared to. He's gonna kind of look up at the hotel, um, thinking about the possibilities of where Dick Spears may have gone. Um, he's going to flip, flick his cigarette away from him. <coughs> All right, follow me. And they're going to walk into the hotel crowd, um, trying to get some witness statements and get a heading on where to go. She's like walking into the lobby. Yeah. So yeah, as you walk into the lobby, you know there's there's kind of some police out front. They're doing crowd control. Um, uh, some members of the approved press are out front with those big old flash balls, boom, boom, going off everywhere. Everybody stand back, stand back. Nothing to see here. You heard the order from the Reichsmarshal. Unless you're EMS or police, get home. 
get home and open a bottle of champagne. There's nothing for you to see here. And as they walk through, they kind of look at, uh, at uh, Charles and, and Weber and uh, one of the policemen here, kind of with their, their gear on, say, Officers, identification, please. Yeah, of course. He's going to pull out his badge. I was wondering, has anybody done any actual investigation, talked to some witnesses, gotten some intel, or where are we at in all this? Well, uh, the officers, sir, they, they're not, they're not police, they're probably the equivalent of like a National Guard in the, in the GNR. They kind of looked at each other with a puzzled expression to say, I'm not at liberty to discuss that, sir. I know there's one of the high ups inside. They're gathering up all staff of the hotel and some of the patrons as well. Very systematic. Sounds like he's from the fatherland itself, so I would uh, cross your T's and dot your I's, sir. If I say so myself. Uh, you look like a local boy to me. As local as it can get, I guess. Uh, what's the lead's name? Who should I be looking for? Uh, his dogs call him, uh, he goes by the name of Mueller. Mueller. Alright, got it. Thank you for your help. And he's going to motion to Weber to follow him, and he's going to go inside looking for who's in charge and asking around for Mueller. step inside all right you guys should be all be able to see that right Awesome. So you step inside and you are greeted by lines of GNR police. And again, it's like a, a, an atmosphere of controlled chaos. The hotel lobby um, is, is no longer filled with people enjoying their drinks at the bar. Uh, there's a large uh, Nazi banner with a swastika and blood red hung up from the, uh, from the column there. And you can see uh, a gentleman in a black trench coat um, kind of giving orders at the scene. And these police have three columns of hotel patrons and, and staff that they're questioning. They're going over ID cards and that sort of thing. And um, he sees you walk in uh, with Weber, uh, but then just kind of turns back around to continue what he's doing. You, you kind of get the sense that, yeah, you're, you're presence here is tolerated but you're not one of the high ups you're not important so just be uh seen but don't speak up seen not heard yeah he's gonna look over to weber um wish me luck he's gonna walk up Excuse me, Officer Mueller. I was wondering if I could ask for a moment of your time. And as you do that, Mueller is kind of um, behind uh, the hotel desk where the concierge normally sits. And in front of him uh, is a young lady and her child. And, and he's looking over this young lady's passports. Looks at the passport. Looks at the lady. Looks at the passport slides it across the desk to her. Very well. You are free to go. Go into that line over there. And he points to a line where hotel patrons are lined up against the wall, being kind of held at gunpoint by uh, several men with some machine guns. Yeah? Can I help you? Can't you see I'm a little busy here doing actual police work, sir? 
Yes, sir, I understand. And I appreciate the work you're doing here. Um, I've been charged by the NYPD to find the man responsible to this who's also related to a crime earlier today. It was earlier today that that happened, right? The car shooting and the killing of yeah, the police overnight. officers? Yeah, Over, overnight. Okay, that happened overnight um, involving an armed gunman shooting at some police officers. Um, there's a hospital escape, but we believe that this was his next target. I was just curious if you had any information on the perpetrator of this crime and any potential whereabouts. And he looks at you, kind of looks you up and down, trying to get a um, impression of if you're competent or not, if he even wants to include you in this stuff or, or escort you out under our armed machine gun guard. Um, so why don't you give me uh, some sort of check to see uh, how he kind of uh, looks at you. Um, can you it can be coercion? If you want to try to threaten him in some way, yes. Oof, I don't know that I want to try to threaten him. Um, let me see. So social skills, um, coercion is pretty good. Your deception's good. The other stuff's pretty average. Yeah. Two. So coercion, I have to like intimidate him somehow. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be an outright like I'm going to beat your ass unless you, you know, include me in the situation. Um, you can be creative with it. But these types of folks don't like to be coerced either, so failure would not be good. Yeah. This isn't you really have story, You have story points as well. So you could use a story point to create a, a, a point um, in the story that would make some sort of coercion more feasible. Like uh, maybe you've heard about Mueller's indiscretions or something like that. Um, like a blackmail him, you know. You can be creative. I don't know you that I want to. In some way. Yeah. Crap. Um. Even though it's not great, I think I'm just gonna try. Like, negotiation. Um, let's see where that gets me. All right. Um, it's going to be a, an average check uh, with a setback die. It's because you're coming in off the street. You're not part of his crew. Just one setback? Yep. So success with a threat. So give yourself a point of strain Come. as you deal with this jack-booted, black, trench-coat, SS menacing man and tell me how you negotiate yourself into this. Listen, sir, I know that you don't want me here as much as I don't want to be here. I just want to get the information I need and step out of your way as soon as possible so you can continue your fine work. He looks you up and down, looks over at Weber. Yeah, I suppose it's bad optics not to have the locals involved in this sort of thing. And I suppose we can use all the help we can get. You look like a capable sort. My name is Hans Mueller. He extends his right hand to shake your hand. And you might be? Charles Davis. And he reaches out and takes his hand and gives him a firm handshake. Ah, fairly well, Officer Davis, and your partner over there. I'll tell you what we could use help in. Line number two, and he points to the middle line there in the lobby. Uh, please go man to man, woman to woman, child to child. Check for identification. If anything seems a little bit off-putting, you let me know. They'll be dealt with 
and put into line one. And he points over to like where the guards are with a sun machine gun. Please report to me after you're done. And after that, we'll start moving up to the rooms themselves. Sounds good. Officer Weber, let's help these fine gentlemen out. So as you walk over to line two, um, there's, there's men and women there. Uh, they have uh, fedoras on. They have their hairs up in uh, uh, festive uh, styles. They're, they're ready to go out on the town with their morning of shopping and, 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 and having a good time before New Year's Eve was first interrupted by this order from the Reichsmarshal to stay indoors and then very rudely interrupted by someone uh, wildly firing a gun outside and killing two young men. Um, they look very concerned. They look scared as you approach them. Their eyes are wide. Their pupils are dilated. They're doing their very best to comply because they know uh, that any sort of misspeaking, any misdeed, if they look the wrong way, if they don't give the appropriate salute, well, they'll end up on line one. That's where they do not want to be. Yeah, um, I'm going to figure out where where in the line I need to step in um, and approach whatever citizen is standing there. So you start working your way down through the line and nothing really looks uh, uh, nothing really looks uh, out of the ordinary at all uh, until you get to a, uh, a portly gentleman with uh, a beard and some mutton chops and uh, it's pretty clear that this guy uh, has, has, a, has a fake fake papers fake passport just to the training cop uh, he says his name is, is uh, Mr. Roberts and kind of he looks at you with very kind of timid eyes as he hands you his papers. Tell me, Mr. Roberts, you happen to see any of the situation unfold today? Uh, no, no, officer. I haven't haven't seen anything out of the ordinary. Uh, just came to New York on on business. Uh, I'm a, a jewel, jewelry merchant, and, uh, well, this unfortunate business this morning happened, and, <laughs> see, I'm, sorry, I'm caught right in the web. <laughs> seems like that, indeed. And even worse than that, it seems like your papers are a little out of date. So, why don't you tell me, just man to man, what's going on? Man to man to man, sir. Uh, like I said, I have no reason to lie, sir. I don't don't want to end up with those unfortunate souls over there. And he points over against the wall where one of the submachine gun guards is patting down someone and uh, takes a pocket knife out of the guy's pocket and then just punches him in the ribs and starts to kick him. And he kind of looks at you. You see his Adam, his apple kind of go up and down as as beads of sweat start to break out on his, on his forehead. Uh, looking around, are there any SS officers nearby or any other police officers or who's kind of a, around me at the moment? Most of the real thugs are dealing with people in line. One, there are some local, uh, not local police, but there are some GNR police kind of going through the third line. And that's why they kind of used you in the middle. But yeah, if you wanted to get somebody's attention, uh, one of the kind of paramilitary SS guys, you could certainly do that. Yeah. Um, I'm looking around at them, and then I look back at Mr. Roberts. All right, listen here. If you don't want to go to line one over there, you're going to need to start giving me some answers, telling me the truth. You know as well as I do that these aren't real. That this is fake. Tell me what's going on. Or I'll put you in the line with the rest of them. I, I just... He looks around and says... Yes, they are. 
I, I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry for not being wholly honest with you. They are ex expired. I, I realized that today. I meant to update them as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And I want you to see if, if you can tell if he's telling the truth or not by giving me a check of... Streetwise, just an average, straight up average check. Yeah. Give yourself another strain for the situation. As you're doing that, Yuller yells over, Move faster, Davis! We don't got all day! So give yourself another strain for that. But you see through Mr. Roberts' lies as the mutton chopped man starts to break out into a sweat. And uh, it's clear that he's not telling you the truth at all. He still has something to hide, something that is even worth the risk going over to line one. One last chance, Mr. Roberts. We need to end this right here. You need to tell me what's going on right now, or I'm sending you over there. I, 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 Can I try coercion I, or anything? Yes. Great. Uh, is this average difficulty? Just just threaten them to sending send over there probably is enough coercion. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be average with a boost because uh, you have those dudes with submachine guns that just like beat the fuck out of that guy for carrying a pocket knife. Yeah. Ooh, sweet advantage, success with two advantage. So, uh, why don't you give yourself a boost on your next check? Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to say boost marker one. Um, and then he's like, you swear, you, you swear to keep this between you and me. It, it will bring no danger to you, no danger to this situation. I'm an honest man, American born. You can trust me. American born, American values. Is that right? That's right. And he kind of looks at you. And he, on the end seam, he kind of peels open the lapel of his jacket. And on the end seam of it is a yellow star of David, David that just says Juden on it. And he kind of puts it back. Charles nods. All right, sir, I appreciate your patience and understanding. Go ahead and step right this way. And he's going to point over towards line three is the line, like the good line, right? Yeah, like they've is, been checked been, and most, everything. Most, yeah, they've been mostly checked. They're about ready to be released. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then he's going to send them over there. Anybody give you gives you any problems or asks you about your paperwork, just send them to me. And uh, it's very clear he's extremely uh, overwhelmed with gratitude for what you've done for him. I, I wish I knew your name, officer, but under these circumstances, it's clear you might not want me to know that. Just move along, it's sir. Possible deniability and all that, but thank you, thank you. And he, he moves along to line three. And if you'd like, you can clear the rest of that line without any incidents. Everybody else seems to be kind of, uh... Yeah, that's the plan. Really He's just kind of um, going through, checking everybody's papers, but also asking if they've seen anything and if they caught a glimpse of um, the assailant and where they might have disappeared to or what they looked like and those sorts of questions. They have not, unless you use a story point. I will use a story point. Use that story point. Uh, you can use it from your sheet. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, you're, you're about ready to clear the line. And there is a, a very well put together uh, platinum blonde. Um, with uh, black high heels 
uh, and a uh, charcoal uh, uh, trench coat uh, who says, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I didn't want to make very much of it. I thought this gentleman just had a, a rough night, but in the elevator earlier this morning, there was a rather shabby looking man, and I suppose he maybe just got back from the hospital or something, but I didn't think much of it. He's heading up the, the 23rd floor. 23. Thank you so much for your cooperation, ma'am. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, uh, can I follow uh, that gentleman into line three? And she points towards Mr. Roberts. Yes, of course. All your papers. Check out. Look good. Have yourself a nice day, ma'am. So that line is cleared. Um, the, the platinum blonde uh, looks relieved and moves over to line three. And uh, Mueller anxiously awaits your report. I'm going to head back to Mueller. All right, sir. All clear. Seems like everybody was in order. I was wondering if you would allow me to do some investigation on some rooms. Absolutely. Looks like everybody here is processed. Hey, boys! Take those out back. You know what to do with them. He points up over to line one. They start to file, file those fo folks out the back of the hotel, and says, uh, "Yep, absolutely, Officer Davis. We're going to start going room to room next, uh, questioning all the patrons. Do you have any leads?" I. Uh... I think it's best to start from the bottom, work our way up, make sure that we're covering all exits and that nobody's getting through until we're done searching the entire place. I agree. And uh, he gets on the radio and kind of turns away from me and starts to give orders about um, going uh, room to room, starting with the first floor and kind of going up. During that time, um, I'm going to try to grab Officer Weber and get moving towards the, to check out the 23rd floor. Excellent. And with that, the scene fades and we're going to go up to our familiar hotel room. So this scene picks up shortly after our game ended last time. Looking down below, you can see ambulances, you can see police cruisers, you can see GNR and NYPD police swarming the self place like, like so many ants to a, a candy bar as the sirens blare. Henry is stabilized for the moment, but now you have another problem on your hands. Two gunshot victims dead outside, and you just know there's an investigation starting down the lobby. Out in the corner of the of the suite, like the the, the, the back um, the back windows. Uh, kind of wrap around the side of the suite and you can kind of see down to the street you can kind of see down to the back alley you guys can even see like a line of of men and women and even a couple children kind of being led out the back of the hotel you can see down below you men in helmets just kind of line up before them and then you just hear a sound that sends chills down your spine And you see the figures just slump against the wall. You see another line led out. You see again the, 
rifles come up to the shoulders, and again, a dozen rifles' bodies just slump against the wall. Then the Nazi dogs descend on the bodies and start to drag them away to a line of vans that wait around the corner. I would like Ruth and Henry to make a discipline check. Average with a setback. See if you take any strain from this entire situation. Uh. <laughs> and I want you to RP it. And you have story points. I shall be using a story point. <laughs> What'd you say it was, Bo? Average? Average with a setback. Average with a setback. And you can upgrade your check one time since you're going to use the story point. The proficiency, right? Mm hmm. Okay, I want to go buy it. I'm not going to use that to give you. Uh, uh, to give you stress, instead, um, your next check from that from that failure from the threat is you're going to you're going to get a setback to your next check. So, tell me how this looks as you guys with steely eyes look down below and see two dozen innocent people slaughtered to send a message. So Henry. Uh making his way over kind of hobbling holding where uh he just got stitched up at looking out the window and sees that the the feeling that he's feeling he was feeling sorry for himself and sore and now he's just feeling more resolved and anger his eyes furl down as he stares at the massacre that's going on he looks over at ruth Mm, Those, oh, sorry, go ahead. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, Ruth is looking down, seeing men, women, children being slaughtered by these Nazis. It's... She feels, at first, this deep sadness, almost an anger towards Henry for getting himself, not getting himself into the situation, killing those two kids outside. But it's bigger than that. It's not just about what he did, it's about what they're doing. She furrows her eyebrows clenching her fist, looks over to Henry, as they have to pay for what they've done. This is unacceptable. These people did nothing. And yet they slaughtered them. None of these people, none of the victims did anything. And he's gonna look or Francis that and look back at Ruth. You two need to stash the video and go. They're looking for me. We need to take the video with us. Francis has a contact. Able to copy it. Isn't that right, Francis? She'll look back at Francis. Turning her body slightly. Her eyes slightly narrowed. Bed? Francis? Ew. Hello? Hi. Sorry, you're getting a little pixelated for me. Oh. Can you say that last part again? 
Um, so, Ruth looks over to Francis. You have someone who can copy the video. We have to take it with us. We don't have time for this investigation to finish. We have to go. Right, Francis? Yeah. I do know the people that can do this. We can make copies. We just have to get out of here with our, our hides intact. I am sorry, and I do not like saying this, but compared to the two of you, I, I feel like I do have the best chance of escaping unscathed. Though it would feel like running away after all we've been through. <sighs> Are you running away to get away, or...? Are you running away to get this copy? Is that is the real question? You'll know that I will not abandon you, Ruth. I know. Well, Thank you. it's only a matter of time before they come up here. Like I said, there's the video somewhere else besides this room. They'll come in here and you'll be gone. They'll find me. You know, Henley, if they find you, they're going to realize what your name is. They're going to realize that we had this room together. They're going to realize that Chandra was also a part of this. People who came up here, they'll probably recognize Francis, Alan, the other two who came up here. If you get cards, we all do. You understand that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think moving's gonna work too well. No. This place is swarming with them. But with you guys gone, this could be a break-in. A break-in? Henley! And Ruth kind of pinches her pinches her nose, the bridge, frowning slightly and opening her eyes and again glaring at Henry. You don't understand. Henley! If you get taken down there, if you get taken to the lobby, they'll recognize you. They'll know you had a room here. This can't be a break-in if you're already staying here. Uh, true. Everybody's gonna sit there and think for a minute. We have to hide you. Up. Up? Yeah. Up there. Is it the roof? That, that's where we'll go. Can't go down. Go up. Up. Yeah, exactly. Where do you hide on the roof? Well, it don't matter if they come up. It's the end of the story. If I go down, it's the end of the story. Either way, I'm not here. But... What do you mean? But you're not thinking of jumping. Well... You had a good point. If I leave a corpse, they'll recognize me. Swan dive would fix that. <clears throat> Only if it came to it. You can't be serious. You can't just... Kill yourself. Henry's gonna look at her. Eyes a little narrowed. The mission has to be successful. They need to be stopped. Can't <sighs> stop them if we're in jail. Can't stop them if we're dead. <clears throat> Going down is a same thing as if I jumped. Ruth shakes her head. I don't like it, honey. But I prefer if you choose somewhere in here to hide. Maybe yeah. we can ward off the people from looking in here. They are two charming ladies, right, Francis? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm sure we Henry, can. just trust to us. We can send any folks away. Exactly. If it comes to it, fine. Don't go sacrificing yourself for this if you don't have to. We still need you. I don't need you, Henry. Well, if they find me in here, it might be too late to change then. Just... <clears throat> just hide somewhere, okay? We'll handle it. Henry's gonna start looking around. Throws it under a bed. That'd be good. So, then he's gonna look for his guns. Uh, grab them. Grab the bottle of whiskey, take a big swig. If they toss that mattress, you guys get out of here. We will. We really don't want them to see the mattress with the gun hole in it either. Very suspicious. So we will roll them away, but we have to hurry. Hopefully they search quickly. We need to leave, or at least find a way to leave, since we technically can't go outside. We need another way to get out. Yeah, how about it? <clears throat> I don't think they're going to go easy on the search. You'd be surprised what we can accomplish. And Ruth, um, she's still wearing um, the outfit from last night. She'll pull it slightly off to the side, you know, showing a bit more shoulder, mussing up the hair a little bit. I can tie to charms him away. I have no doubt about that. Leave it to us. Go hide. I bet Henry's gonna go to the bedroom and go underneath the bed. With both his guns in his hand. Ruth is gonna start kind of scouring the apartment just in case for any signs, any bloody footprints, any toss pillows, anything that shows there's been an injured person in the main living room. Yeah, you, you walk around the apartment. You've had enough time at this point that you have done everything you can to cover up the sign of any struggle. If Henry has splattered any blood anywhere, it's kind of matted down into the ill-colored nineteen late 1950s carpet and uh, you don't think that anybody's going to be able to see it. Okay. And she'll look to Francis. Now, once this is over, how do we leave here? Well, what is here? Do you mean the city? Do you mean the hotel? I mean Which part the of our current busters do you mean? <laughs> The hotel in order to get into the street, you need to see your friends. And with the no civilians outside all, makes it a bit of a problem. She sighs. Well, ideally some sort of ruse and we would walk to the front door. Otherwise there is a stairwell that goes down the length of the hotel. No doubt that will be, be watched, but at this point, our options are not ideal. You know this, Ruth. I know. Maybe I'd say the back way. Go down the stairs. See if we can sneak away. Hopefully this investigation won't take too long. If it takes more than, I'd say, an hour, we should leave. Or at least try to. 
So at this point, you hear like some commotion out in the hallway. Uh, you hear his, uh, you know, some scruffling around. Hold still, you bitch! And you hear, ah! you hear a woman screaming. Are you going to do anything about it or sit tight right now? Um, is there like a little peephole in the door? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, Ruth is going to hurry towards the door and kind of kind of peek out the, uh, the peephole and see what's going on. You, the only thing you can see uh, is the very back of, of like a helmet from around the corner. And there seems to be some sort of struggle going on. Like, like a gunmetal gray helmet. Ruth just debates on going out to help, but she's going to stay inside. All right. Discipline hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you tell me how you feel awful on the inside, but you know that it's the greater good that you just don't stick your neck out right now. How's yeah. that feel? Oh, so Wolf stares out into the hallway through this people, just watching the struggle, hearing these yelps and screams. She has her hand on the handle. Looks like she's ready to open the door. And she can clasp it tighter before removing her hand, stepping back from the door, closing her eyes and shaking her head. She's feeling it's kind of this almost overwhelming guilt, but knowing they have to get this video copied, get this video out, in order to save more than just one woman keeps her from opening the door to help and walks back into the living room and sits on the Chesterfield. This is awful. As she says that word awful, that scene starts to fade and we're going to move back to Charles Davis and Officer Weber. Are you taking the Stairs up to the 23rd floor, or the, the uh, elevator? I figure the elevator, <laughs> since that's where... Okay. You'd have to have like a some sort of check once you get to the top to see how... <laughs> yeah, how exhausted are you from running up all those stairs? Mm -hmm. But yeah, elevator, since that's where the woman said she saw the man. On the way up in the elevator, just as an incidental, you do see like a little drop of blood kind of in the corner of the elevator. Officer Weber kind of looks at you, doesn't say anything, but makes eye contact. And eventually the... Ding! The door opens on the 23rd floor and you step out to the hallway. From down the hall, maybe 15 meters down the hall, you see one of the jackbooted thugs with a brunette kind of pushed against the wall starting to force himself upon her and you hear the exact same thing like kind of what Ruth heard like stay still you bitch and then you hear a, a, a female scream and she tries to kind of kick him away but he's super strong he has his submachine gun kind of slung down over his low back and it's kind of forcing himself upon her as you kind of exit into the hallway he looks up Officer. What are you doing up here? I'm not sure that that's the question you should really be asking yourself. <laughs> I don't think that... But it's an invasion if you can't enjoy yourself. Now move along. Get down through the lower levels. Leave me be. Mueller's starting his investigation downstairs. I think you're quite missed right now. Gula won't miss me for this short amount of time. He kind of looks down. Don't worry, sweetie. I never won any medals for endurance. <laughs> he starts to go about his business again. Officer. Not paying attention to you. 
I said leave me fucking be. This isn't the time for that. We have a rebel of some sort on the loose. We need to concentrate on efforts, our efforts on finding him. You can get your rocks off later. I don't give a shit. But right Which now... Fuck are you? He kind of stands up and the woman kind of scrambles out from underneath him, runs back down the hallway right towards where you see that light and you hear a door open and slam um, as she kind of goes down that back hallway we were talking about. He's like, zips up his pants. He's like, who the fuck are you? You're cruising for a bruising. And he kind of starts to storm towards you. He is, his weapon's still lo hung low across his back, but he's he's pulling up, like rolling up his shirt sleeves, you know. Yeah, I pull, I'm going to pull out my badge. Uh, Charles Davis. I'm in charge of the investigation for finding the rebel and bringing him to justice. I don't think that this is necessarily the kind of situation that you want to put yourself in. <laughs> a local. Fuck you. And he's going he's gonna to come at you unless you talk him down, coerce him down, threaten him. Or do something. I'm, work I'm working directly alongside uh, Officer Mueller. I don't think that you really want me talking to him about how you've come to disrespect me and uh, force yourself upon a potentially innocent civilian for no reason other than you were fucking horny. So why don't you fucking calm down and go downstairs? What are you going to do about it? You're not going to do much without teeth. And tell your little bitch boy here to leave too. He kind of points at Weber. All right, time to roll dice. Hey, you want to do this? Coercion again? Yeah, I'm gonna do coercion. And I've got that boost die, right? You got a boost, and I'm gonna use a story point. Um, what difficulty is this? That's gonna be hard. Okay. And then what you're, what you're going to do is going to say like upgrade, upgrade difficulty. I think is what it's going to be, and that will change one of your purples to a red because I'm using a story point. And just do one there. Yes. Okay. And don't forget your boost. Yep, got my boost. <laughs> Triumph too. <laughs> <laughs> So you are emboldened as this guy's going to cower down. So why don't you regain a strain? Okay. Regain a strain. And tell me how you're going to dress down this guy and what you want him to do. Listen, officer, I don't mind you trying to get your rocks off and trying to beat me up for intervening but could you at least put your cock away before you come at me and I kind of want to make fun of him a little bit um, and put him a little bit in a embarrassing predicament I guess uh I've already talked to Mueller. Yep. He wants you downstairs. Get the fuck downstairs. So the, the SS guard looks into Davis's eyes, look over to Weber, and Weber's just like nodding his head like, what, what? And he's like, fine, fine. I'll stand down. I don't want any trouble from Mueller, but uh, what happens here? Stays here, is that right? I'm not one to betray a comrade. Scratches his temple. Which uh, begs the question. Why the hell are you two boys up here? As I said, I'm in charge of the investigation for finding, finding the rebel. Uh, I have a lead that caused me to believe that 
this was a place worth checking out while everybody was putting pressure on the lower floors working their way up. We've got this handled nods. though. He nods, kind of grabs his rifle and straightens his collar, heads on down the hall in the opposite direction disappears down that stairway at the other end of the hall and you hear silence again all right Weber let's see um, Charles is gonna look around um, for one he's making a special note of what room that girl is in um, and where she ran off to but also he's wanting to look at the ground see if he can see any like blood spots or anything or a bit of a trail that might kind of point him into the direction of dick yeah you have a trained eye you, you don't see anything at first and then down like right around the baseboard you do see a little bit of a blood splatter right outside um uh, room number 14. and uh, kind of giving a quick clear cursory glance um I don't see the blood spot leading anywhere else down the hallway. It seems pretty focused, kind of outside this room. Came, yeah. All right. All right, Weber, get ready. I'm gonna knock. And so from inside, uh, Francis, Ruth, and Henry hear somebody at the door. Ruth gets from the chest of you, taking a deep breath, puts on a bit of a concerned face before quickly approaching the door. She opens it slightly. Uh, hello, this is... Afternoon, ma'am. Do I recognize her at all? first of all or no uh, uh ruth wolf you're kind of like a b-list celebrity i don't think you necessarily do uh unless you want to make me a uh, knowledge check that's going to be a hard difficult sure i'll try it out threat uh, i'm just going to say set back your next check okay you don't you don't you don't recognize ruth but elsewhere in the room you see the uh rather composed and very elegant franz uh, francis dietrich which has been plastered all over the tv these past few weeks and what has she been plastered on tv for for being missing she's a, or no she's an up-and-coming uh uh, filmmaker who got her start in in Berlin um, movie houses making kind of independent artsy films um, as the Reich rose to prominence she began to make more and more um, films that uh, catered to the Nazi ethic and now is uh, making a, a film um, that's going to be starring um, in Times Square and elsewhere in New York City during the Yard and All celebration that's going to uh, extol the virtues of the greater Nazi Reich here in America. Okay. You know, you know her as Francis Dietrich. All right. And I'm just going to make a side note in my mind that both of these women are blonde. Um, I'm sorry for bothering you, ma'am. Miss um, Dietrich, it's an uh, honor to meet you in the flesh. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard, we currently have an investigation going on in this hotel. I was wondering if I could ask for, your mom for a moment of your time. Oh, of course. Um, we heard the sirens. Uh, I hope nothing too bad's gone on. We heard some of the other gunshots going on downstairs. Um, if I may ask, what exactly is happening? Unfortunately, there have been some murders uh, outside the building, as well murders. as... Unfortunately, yes, ma'am. And uh, we believe that it's connected to a man that 
shot some police officers last night as well and escaped from uh, police custody in the hospital as he was recovering. Oh, thank God. I, I, I can't believe that someone like that would be in this hotel. That's good that you all are here. It's a shock to all of us, for sure. Um, unfortunately, the Nazi regime is currently wa working alongside the NYPD to search the building, starting from the first floor, working their way up. Um, I was put in charge of finding and apprehending um, the suspect, and uh, I had a bit of a hunch that he may have been on this floor. I was wondering if you'd permit me and my partner here to search the area, ask some questions, um, just to kind of clear both of you so you can continue on with your day. Well, uh, as much as you know, we appreciate that um, we are a little bit um, busy. You see, it's uh, Francis and I are getting ready for tomorrow. We have um, some things to go over, and uh, as much as I understand that um, you need to search for this gentleman, I, I'm not sure why you think that it would be my room, let alone with my friends in Stitrek. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Uh, I understand that both of you are busy, but I need you to understand that this isn't a question, necessarily. It's more of something I need to do, and I need you to step both aside while I do it. Ruth will look back to Frances, kind of seeing what she gauge her. Uh, she looks at you and then looks back at Charles and looks at Officer Weber and gives a eh, kind of demure smile and stands back and says, So, Ruth, I think we should not stand in these handsome man's way. We have nothing to hide here. But Henry Winters, you, you're you're hiding in a mat under the bed, right? Henry Winters? Yeah, I'm hiding under the bed. The bed. So, so you hear that you hear this conversation happening. Give me some RP about what's going through your mind. Um, you you recognize Officer Davis's voice too as he steps in. Uh, right now Henry would be sitting there listening, trying to be as silent as he can, holding any coughs or everything. His, his hands are on his pistols and at his side so if the bed gets lifted he could point whichever way the bed was lifted from being silent so he could hear the minute details of the conversation waiting for trouble that might arise Ruth takes a step back uh, of course um, come in ask any questions that you need to ask um Actually, and Ruth will actually um, kind of lead the two officers quickly. Um, she's still got one of her bags kind of out. Uh, do you mind if I ask you, officers, uh, just a couple, like, just a question? Of course. Ah. And she'll kind of root around her bag. She'll pull out two separate outfits, um, one being a very deep red dress. The other being a blue one, she'll kind of walk over, give a bit of a smile. Ah, since uh, Francis and I have actually been um, debating on what to wear uh, tomorrow, and I kind of need a male opinion, uh, which one do you think I should wear? I'm thinking the red one. Uh, I can't really say, honestly, ma'am. I. I haven't been a part of that world for quite some time now. My wife always loved blue, though. I think it looks good okay. with your eyes. Oh, thank you. Ah, do you like I can go and try it on? Come out while you search? No, that's quite alright. I think I'd rather just clear this room uh, and l let you two on with your day um, without any further disturbance from the Reich. Uh, of course, officer. 
looking around the room as I'm talking to her, do I see any blood? Uh, actually, give me a... Uh, let's see here. Give me a... You could either do Streetwise or you could do Skullduggery. Uh, check to see if you do, and it's going to be a hard check. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna do yeah, streetwise. Remember, you have a setback as well. Yeah, can I steal a story point from you? And use that? Would that be possible? You can, if, you, if you steal the story point for me and then use it, that means you find it automatically. That's, that would be a big deal. That's a once per session talent. And if you do that, it'll be like leading right to where Henry is. <laughs> nah. I think I want to save that for if I do find him, I want to save it for potentially whatever may happen afterwards. Um, so it's hard check. Um, with, with a setback. With a setback. It's going to go great. Oof. Uh, so you fail miserably. Yep. <laughs> but you have two advantages. So I'm going to um I'm going to let you regain one strain. Okay? Okay. And then I'm also going to give you a uh, a boost on your next check. All right. Um, as you look around, uh, you thoroughly case the place. They are very impressed with your competence, but both Ruth and Francis kind of look at each other and breathe a sigh of relief that you don't find anything suspicious on the floor. Oh, I was more like just wanting to cursory glance, like look at the ground and see if I saw any blood stains. Um, I was planning on having Weber search the place while I questioned those two. If that's okay. Yep, he's your lackey. I'm actually going to do it. Um, give a... Nothing. He hasn't turned up anything either. Okay, that's fine. Uh, while he's looking around, I'm going to talk to those two, if that's cool. Yeah, he's just, like, moving around. Do you mind if I he sit? He's flashlight every now and then. <laughs> Looks in the corner. Mind if I sit, ask you a couple questions? Of course, officer. Um, would you like something to drink? No, no, I'm fine. I've, I've got a drink by already. And he's going to kind of pull out his flask and... Take a sip and put it back. You're not going to sit your morning time. Got to stay awake somehow, right? So, um, on this floor leading from the elevator, I saw a blood trail kind of leading outside your door. Have you had any suspicious visitors other than the two of us today? Mm. Ruth will look to Francis, shaking her head, and looks back to Charles. Mm, nine. We haven't had anyone, um, anyone suspicious coming here. Nothing strange has gone on. Mm, nine. So you didn't just hear that officer trying to rape a woman in the hallway? <sighs> oh. Ruth will look down at her lap. I. Yeah, I, 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 I did, I did hear that. I, I, I did not think it was um, my business getting involved. I, I know what happens if you get involved with those people. I don't really expect you to have gotten involved. Um, thankfully, I was able to come along and stop it before anything too scarring happened. But I do find it curious that. You wouldn't classify that as a strange occurrence in your day. 
Well, if you'd like to count as a strange occurrence, people being led outside and shot is a strange occurrence. Police coming towards the building is a strange occurrence. I just wraps them all into one since you're here, since you're aware of what happened, since you came to my door pretty much right after the screen stopped. And we lumped it all into one. My strange occurrence, what you asked me is anything I thought you once aware of, officer. I apologize for the confusion. It's quite alright. Just simply trying to find some answers is all. Of course. Um, I will say it is a bit of a strange coincidence. Blood trail leading here. And uh, I heard the shooter had two blonde compatriots, pretty women, young women. You two match the description pretty well. <laughs> well, officer, if you were to persecute every person with two pretty women, I pretty blonde women too, I think you would be questioning quite a few people. Yeah, of course. But I thank you for the compliment. <laughs> it is appreciated. He kind of chuckles, um, smiling to himself. Of course. It's not that just you're blonde, I wouldn't question or... Um, suspect just a blonde woman in general but it's the fact that I have a witness saying she saw a bloody man coming up the elevator to the 23rd floor um, seeming like he had the rough of it and that you have a blood stain leading up to your door now that's suspicious and that's something worth investigating oh. well <laughs> I apologize it, it was not long ago that Francis and I woke up we had a bit of a late night last night you see <laughs> a bit of celebration before yarn all celebration for the, the movie and everything um, up late driving it, around, perhaps? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not, just drinking and partying, really. Um, it could have been that this person came to our door. Could have been that they knocked, tried to get in, but we always locked the door before. And off for sleeping. Where were you drinking and partying at? Uh... Unfortunately, I am not very familiar with New York, and I got quite a, quite a bit of, what's this, uh, the American word, uh, toasty. Uh, Francis, do you remember where we went? <laughs> no, it's, it's all just a haze. It was fun bars, and it was a NASA, and it was, it was a rooftop, and a hot tub. <laughs> ah, the life of the artist, you know? <laughs> yeah, she drags me everywhere. It's... She's a bit of a menace, but uh, I appreciate the connection she's given me. <laughs> <laughs> and so much hand-holding. Oh no! <laughs> Don't tell the officers about that, that's it. <laughs> it's inappropriate. Alright. Um, do I know Francis's connection to Alan Dietrich? Yeah, they're a well-known couple. They're the Brad and Angelina. Okay. Uh, turning to her, ma'am, I do want to, uh, talk to you specifically. Um, Alan Dietrich, your husband, was with me at the time where we were, um, transporting the prisoner to SS headquarters here in New York. Um, he got a hold of J. Edgar Hoover's gun and shot his brains out, um, forced me to drive him and drop him off somewhere near here even um, has your husband contacted you at all today or talked to you about what's happened just as a point of the narrative as you speak this way to Francis 
the color drains out of her face. As a trained investigator and cop, you can see that the mention of her husband is not entirely shocking. She's been told that for somehow he lives, but this change in his manner, this change in his character is extremely off-putting to her. Her eyes dilate a little bit. She simply says, no, no, I have not heard from Alan. He is very busy with Yano. I do believe he had a appointment with the Reich Marshal this morning. That he did. You seem a bit nervous, if you mind me saying, ma'am. Is everything okay? She, she nods and casts a furtive look over to Ruth. Um, officer, I, 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 I hope you know that, um, Francis and, and Alan are, um, you know, she's gonna lean forward, um, they are a bit on the outside now, um, it's a bit awkward to bring it up. Really? That's disappointing to hear. Uh, yes, that is, um, Five year. Another reason why we were out last night. I just please um don't don't tell anyone you you understand. Of course. Confidentiality is my best policy. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Weber. Yes, sir, Officer Davis. How's the search coming along? This place looks clean as far as I can tell, sir. All right. One last note, ladies. Um, the Nazis will have to research this floor. And uh, they may come and call on you again to search this place. Um, I'm not entirely sure who's going to do the searching and who's going to do the investigating here, but... I do hope that they treat you with the respect that I hopefully have given you. Um, listen, you're most likely not going to get the same treatment with them as you are with the, me. I like to think of myself as an honest man, hardworking man, American man, just doing what I can to get by, doing what I can to help the people around me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what that man is doing or if you two are involved, what you're doing. But if you have anything to say to me, anything to explain, now's the time to do it before the Nazis get up here. At that point, you do start to hear some rustling around out in the hallway. And out in the hallway, you hear very loud raps on, on doors kind of coming down. Like, Look, open up! Looks like they're coming. Your muffled voices. Nazis are much better at finding hidden people than we are. We don't have as much experience, but that's kind of what they're known for, isn't it? Do you not consider yourself? Nazi officer? Nah, I'm just... I'm a police officer. Doing what I can to... Try to help smooth things over. Do what I can to help the people that I can help. I'm sure you definitely helped the people down there. Right? I did. You I didn't send any one person to the death... To the death squad. In fact, I saved a couple along the way. Ruth is gonna narrow eyebrow or narrow eyes slightly at Charles, leaning forward a little bit. So, what exactly are you saying? All I'm saying is. I just want to understand 
what's going on in this situation. And if you have anything that can help me better understand what's going on, then perhaps I can help usher these Nazi search parties along. But if you've got nothing to hide, I'm sure it won't be a problem. Looks over to Francis. Take your time. Okay. Think about it. You've got. It appears that time has run out as you hear. Open up. And now you hear. Now it sounds like the butt of a rifle. Open up. GNR. SS. What do you say? If you send these men away, I will tell you what you want to know. Do you have a deal? Sounds like a deal. He's going to stand up and approach the door, um, opening it and looking at the officer behind. Afternoon, officer. Uh, and he's going to kind of flip open his badge. We've got this one already. And uh, it opens, and there's one of the SS guards there, has his rifle out. Got it covered? Yes, sir, we've got it covered. Uh, he kind of looks into the hotel room, looks to the right, to the left. Fine with me. One less room to search. Amen to that. Uh, looks about in the hallway. Move along, boys, move along. Only five more down the hall. Then up to room 25, then we got this place cleared. Have a nice evening, or morning. <laughs> you too, sir. And he's gonna shut the door. All right. So let's talk, Miss... I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Wolf. Who's Wolf? Charles Davis. And this is Officer Weber. What can you tell me? Uh, Ruth is going to be uh, filling with her hands at this point. Um, I... She's going to pause. Um, it's, uh, you are... Um, I, why exactly did you come up to this floor if they started from the bottom? You say you are in charge of this investigation, yes? That I am. That you saw Mr. Alan Dietrich with you. That he was. And you let this oh, the assailant you let the assailant go after he killed Mr. Hoover. That I did. Bye. Well, Official record says he had a gun on me, but unofficial record is a little more complicated than that. It's the same complications that made it so you never sent anyone to the first line to be gunned down by the Nazis. can say that I'm not exactly loyal to the Reich. I work under the Reich, but my loyalty is to the American people and keeping them safe and doing what I can to help tide this transition of power over peacefully. Um, I don't want anybody to get hurt that doesn't need to get hurt. When I met the man in the hospital, he was largely not giving me much, but given me a little bit to work with um, and
and uh, as we were chatting around, he happened to get his hand on my gun. From there, um, I helped get him back on the streets, took him to Central Park, at where Mr. Dietrich left us, and uh, um, the assailant shot Mr. Hoover with my gun and uh, told me to bring him to an alley near here. Mr. Weber, I hope that you will keep that confidential. Absolutely confidential. Weber's helping himself to a bourbon at the bar. As you can see, ladies, Officer Davis here and myself, we're straight shooters. Just like many in our department, we don't always see eye to eye with the Fuhrer, as you could say. I am sure you have many American values. Maybe even miss back before the like was here. Back when it was normal. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I've lost a lot in all this. And I'm just trying to do what I can to find a sense of normalcy in the crazy. Mm. Trying to pull. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, I'm just trying to pull Henry into this. What's. What's he thinking in the next room as he hears the tone of the conversation shift a little bit? As he hears the familiar voice of Officer Davis turn away the SS guard. As he's clenching his teeth, no doubt, bearing the pain he must be going through from all of his wounds. Well, he heard the other voice of the other officer, so he doesn't... He... he remember him back in the hospital, how the... You know, the detective tried to be a little slick with the saying they had my companions and stuff. Not necessarily believing anything that's going on right now, but he's waiting and listening. Mm-hmm. He's still in his hiding spot. Still in his hiding spot. Try and hold his breath at times when the pain becomes unbearable. So, I guess you could say in all this I'm more interested in learning what's going on rather than catching this man necessarily. You want to know why he did what he did, yes? Yes, ma'am. He doesn't mm. seem the type to just do everything indiscriminately. He seems like the man, kind of man with a plan. Or a goal, at least. I definitely think this man does have some sort of goal in mind. I think this man must have the goal of attempting to disrupt everything that is going on here. The oppression you people are under, that everyone really is under. I think that it is wrong. I think, unfortunately, because of uprising such as this, it is sad, but people do get caught in the crossfire. It is not on purpose, and much guilt is held when things like this happen. But I think this man has the goal of attempting to make this world what it once was free from the, the control of the Reich and to give back what the American people need hope and freedom if I were to guess what this man wanted and if you were to guess he's gonna just do that killing by killing a couple Nazis at a time a couple police officers at a time nine 
It is for a larger goal. What is that goal, yes. Miss Wolf? There are, I'm assuming by the man's actions, things in motion to try and disrupt what will happen tomorrow with taking down the Statue of Liberty. Is that exactly what it is? Liberty for your people. <laughs> Keep saying your people because you're American, but this affects everyone. I would assume that these plans are already in motion and whatever will come tomorrow is above just killing a few people here and there. You Nazis, this will, what the man has planning, I assume, will finally give that hope back to the American people. And what is you this? Understand? I understand, but you're leaving a lot of important details out. What is this larger plan? What's going on? What's going to happen to bring back hope, peace in the American way? Bruce kind of bites the inside out of her mouth. Just chewing the cheek a bit, fiddling with her hands, looking over her nails before looking back up to Charles. There is only so much that I can glean from the man's intentions, though I am not fully sure of yours. But once I am, I think that I might have a better idea. And sending the Nazis away wasn't proof enough of my intentions? It could be some sort of ploy, of course. Sometimes people try to catch others by befriending them. That kind of thing, showing signs of trust before breaking it, once they have the information they want. That's fair. If you find, if you find this man, what do you do with him? I just want to talk. Same as when I met him in the hospital. I'm assuming at this point that it is going to be impossible to get rid of you, but I do not see any hostility in you, nor any hatred, nor any signs of you being loyal to the like. Am I correct in these assumptions, Mr. Davis? I would say so, Miss Wolf. And based on all this information, you know, I imagine that you two are indeed the blonde women that were with the man that night. Which is why I'm so interested, you could say. What do I need to do to prove my intentions? Can I make a perception check just to see if I can kind of glean, or at least kind of judge, um, Charles? See if he seems honest. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. So there's not like a, I mean, there's not, mm -hmm. there's a, you could do a perception, but you can also do, I mean, there's other things you could use too, probably. I think streetwise is always good, um, Ooh. situations. I can use slate wise, sure. Um, what would be the difficulty? Um, what's Charles? Let me look at his discipline. 
his discipline is going to be two, so just say average. Okay. And actually, it's going to be perfect. Right? Nice. Yeah. Not needed. Not needed. <laughs> So, I don't know what you plan to do, uh, Charles Davis, but whatever you're planning to do uh, is an open book to the very perceptive Ruth Wolf, so you guys can RP that out. Yeah, uh, he's being truthful. He wants more information, and he's not necessarily um, hell-bent on finding and arresting this man. Um He's more curious about what's going on at large. Um, and he's not entirely sure what he's going to do with that information once he has it. It's going to be kind of a personal judgment sort of deal. Mm. Ruth nods after looking Charles over and squinting her eyes slightly before she seems to relax. She gives Charles an actual, genuine smile before standing up. Can you give me one moment, please? Of course. And Ruth nods to whoever. As she passes Francis, she'll put a hand on her shoulder, give it a bit of a squeeze. It's okay. She'll continue back to the bedroom, back to where Henry's hiding. As Ruth uh, enters the bedroom, Henry's going to kind of move her aside as he's already on his way out the door with two guns. And, and he's going to cross the threshold and point one at each cop. Henley! All right, Charles Davis, you'd have to make a vigilance uh, check. Um, using one boost, and you get the setback as well. Uh, what's and the difficulty? The... Uh, let me see. I'm going to say his streetwise is three, so it'd be hard. So hard with uh, a boost and a setback. Gotcha. Your boost is from your boost from last time, and the setback is because he's getting the drop on you. Yep. Oof. So you don't have time to raise your weapon. So I think he pops out there. if he's got yeah. two guns, like, does he have his own gun and um, J. Edgar's gun, or does he have my gun and J. Edgar's gun? Well, at one point I had all three. <laughs> you have lots of guns. <laughs> okay. I just couldn't remember if I got mine back at the end of last session, because it's been a while. Uh, I yeah, I think that you would have an issued weapon. That's when you would have a weapon. But. Okay, that's fine. He has reason to at least have two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he walks in, and seeing this and seeing kind of Ruth reacting to him, and specifically picking up on the fact that she called him Henry. Good to see you again, Dick. Or is it Henry? Man of many names, detective. Henley, put down the gun. It's look, I. It's fine. Uh, Please, he's he's not going to take you away. Just, I trust him. I actually, I'm going to spend a story point here for that move. Um, what I want you to do, Henry, is make a. Uh, I will spend my story point. There we go. And I want you to make a hard um, resilience uh, upgraded to difficulty once. So a hard resilience with an upgraded difficulty? Mm hmm. Okay. What, what was the, the resilience check for? Like, what, what, what am I doing if I fail it? Uh, you're going to get some, you're going to get some strain. 
<laughs> yes, story points you can use too. Alright. Didn't want to do this yet. We can also use your talent. Yeah. Yeah. You have that really good talent you can use. That's why I was kind of asking what the result was going to be to see if it was worth using yet. Yeah, or... it's, it's like you're going from the hiding place, popping out with two guns, and a swift move. Once you're already, like, see if your sutures break open, see if you, you're losing some blood, see if you double over in pain and pass out. <laughs> it's just a very, you've been through the ringer. It's a very brazen thing to do. It's a very Henry Winters, Winters thing to do. <laughs> I see actions, I see consequences. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and use the story play as a potential for brilliant and roll that resilience at a four. So that means you upgrade yours. Oh, you have a setback on your next check, too. Cool. So it's going to be a, a battle here. Um, so it's going to be hard with a setback. Upgrade your proficiency once, upgrade your difficulty once. Nah, I would I upgrade my uh, proficiency once since I'd be rolling at a four? No, you, no, it actually just turns a green to a yellow. Or if it's all filled with yellows, it adds another green. I built no. the math in, into the macro. Oh, with brilliant? Oh, so brilliant, you're going to just use... Um, brilliant. Counts as my uh, rank uh, in intellect. So... Let me see. What's your What's your rank? Four. And my rank Four. now is zero as resilience, yes. So you would upgrade it. You would upgrade it. Your rank is four. Your your, your intellect is four. Yes. Oh my god. You'd upgrade it five times. If you're using a story point and the talent, you'd upgrade it five times. I mean, that's what I was asking because with the yeah. gifts, it, it, it counts as incidental, so I'm not sure if it rolls as both. Yep. I don't even know if it goes that high. Well, it, it don't. Yeah, it makes no difference from four to five. Yeah. It does actually. It would add another green on. Well, then, okay. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna be resilient. Third. And one setback. Upgrade difficulty one, right? Yep. <laughs> Success to advantage. So get get rid of two of your strains. I like that. You're you're so you're feeling back your old self again with this move. You're 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 back the old Dick Winners. So RP, RP, how you looking like rolling out there with your, your guns out on these dudes? So as, as he was walking out the door and the roof is on his way and he, he was already rolling out when it sounded like she was about to give away his position. So when she comes walking in, he kind of just, coma collected, he kind of doesn't shove her, but just kind of like edges past her and, and walks out and quick glance notices where Charles Davis is sitting and you know hearing the officer's voice he was able to kind of get a general idea where that he's at and so he, as he comes out he's looking calm cool and collected like he's not even in pain even though he is I go. There we go. Uh, pretty smooth, detective. Telling your story. Uh, kind of harkens me back to the conversation at the hospital. Henley, please put the gun down. Uh, and he's gonna look over at Ruth and she says, it and he's gonna kind of go in and lean against a, a wall and lower his pistols a little bit but they're still like midway 
raised. So tell me, Mr. Davis, what are you looking to gain from all this? I'm just trying to find out what's going on. As always, you're in control of the situation. You get to dictate how this is going to go. Trying to give a little wins when the side starts hurt. I'm not sure how good of an idea it is to fire either of those guns with so many Nazis in the building, though. Well, either you're telling the truth and feel a little sorry for us right now, or the Nazis are just waiting, anyways. Henley. In which case, it doesn't matter. Henley, please. <laughs> I mean, you can have somebody look outside. Look outside in the hallway, or...? Yeah, Cause... that's what he meant. Just to kind of show that there are no Nazis kind of hanging out outside, waiting. He'll kind of look over the roof. Do you mind? Fine, but... You've got to... You've got to toss me, Henley. I... I can tell. He's... He's not the bad man. She'll make her way over to the door before looking out the peephole. As you look out to the hallway, the the hallway looks clear, but from far below you do hear a solitary solitary gunshot. And after that, the uh, the radio on on Weber's hip. Place. <laughs> All units report in. All 25 floors have been cleared. Please return to posts. We do have a suspect in custody, or we did have one in custody. over at the house or the radio was the one off. Give a second. Check David. So let's you gotta check in now. Actually I actually need to use another uh, story point for that that little bit. For my narrative twist. Not necessarily. We aren't exactly part of the Reich's investigation. We're a bit of a separate entity. But it doesn't hurt. Well, it doesn't hurt that maybe you should. Officer Weber, you want to check in? Roger that. What you'd like me to do? Head back down to the lobby. Tell Mueller there's nothing found up here. Get some intel. Yeah, just tell him that we found some uh, interesting company, and we're spending some time to spending some time to recuperate. I guess you could say. That. Do you mind? And he's gonna look towards you three. Uh, nine. Um, so that sounds fine. Hey. Henry's gonna look at the officer. I understand sometimes people feel brave, do foolish things. Let's have you know that if you do. Your friend here is going to be in some pain for a little while. You talk tough, Mr. Winters. I can see you've been through a lot, and, well, I won't even give that comment every tour. He's going he's gonna to disappear uh, downstairs to report back to Mueller and tell him everything's clear. 
uh, he'll likely say that uh, in the course of the investigation we met up with Francis Dietrich and uh, Ruth Wolf and uh, their significant other and um, having some pleasant conversation and that they're doing a little PR recovery because they interrupted uh, interrupted them and they're kind of like uh, celebrities so that makes any sense yeah smart so he'll He'll smooth that. He'll smooth it over from that end. See the other cop go. Henry's gonna put one of the pistols away. Get them more relaxed. Look at that roof. Don't think for one second I never do trust you. You always have. You know, but you're waving around guns and pulling your stitches doesn't help. I... I looked into the man's eyes, Henley, and... I think that Officer Davis can help us. Exactly. Nod at Ruth. Look up at Detective Davis. Seems like he may be helping us again, huh? Seems like it. Uh, without the gun, Henley. Yes, I don't think there's a need for that. <sighs> Seeing Henry just a little uncomfortable putting his weapon, he's gonna uncock it. Lower it down to his side. Yeah, perhaps we should keep it out in case of surprises. Not necessary with their detective friend here, but anyone else. Fine. In, in case surprises, and Ruth will kind of make her way over to Henry and she holds both hands out. Get me the other one. I'm gonna reach behind and grab the pistol and go. Thank you. She'll make sure the inspector so the safety's off and before making her way back to the to the chest of field, sitting down, crossing her legs. Well, ask away, Mr. Davis. What do you want to know? I think you already know what I want to know. What's going on? Well, Obviously, do not support the like, do not support the like being here. In America, the, the reach it has in general, the oppression that it has brought to the city, even to someone such as yourself looking to just get by, reach some sort of normalcy, but if it's all like you, you know that that will never happen. You, you know that nothing will ever be normal. There will still be oppression, still people killed in the streets for no reason. That's why you must understand why they want to help stop that. They want to help work towards a better future, no matter what it takes. And what does that take in this instance? What's your plan? It, take, it takes us getting out of this building, getting a certain piece of media copied, and getting this piece of media shown to the masses tomorrow evening on Yano. This video we have. We hope to inspire those who have been shut down by the like, who have been oppressed, who have been in hiding, who have just tried to accept all the bad that has happened so far. We are going to show this film. And we wanted to 
inspires that hope in people to be able to rebel. Francis, at this point, produces a canister of, of film, a piece of masking tape across the front of it that reads, the grasshopper lies heavy. So, Ruth, yeah. shall we show this gentleman the ultimate proof? Yeah, I, I think we shall. Mr. Davis, do you mind holding on? I will go find um, the video player. Ruth will get up from her seat and look for a film player of some sort. Francis kind of starts to draw all the curtains shut. Of course, happy to. Charles is gonna get up and help look around. Must be a hell of a video if you think it's gonna do so much. It is. Made me abandon my own job, so. All right, well, let's, let's see what you got. So and set up the, the player somewhere where it's showing. Should make sure the volume isn't too loud. Hopefully it's not gonna be heard or is below. That kind of thing. So that happens a few minutes go by and the old familiar whirring and clicking of a old video player starts to take place yesterday morning and you see initially like basically d-day general Jobel, the representative of the german high command and of grand admiral dernitz the designated head of the german state signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Uh, hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. Today is victory in Europe's day. Long live the cause of freedom. God save the King. With that, the film reel flickers off. And it ta -ta 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 comes to a close. So not to be suspicious, Ruth goes, or Francis goes and opens up the curtains, letting some of the light in. And Francis looks at Charles and says, so Officer Davis, I trust you are on board with us now. Do you believe that the future can be changed? Uh, he has a very confused expression on his face as he just is standing there stunned after watching that I, I don't understand what what was that that was America winning the war which obviously did not happen There have been many times occurrences of this Davis that have gone on. Mr. Allen Dietrich, or the officer Allen Dietrich, 
Originally, he died the other night in the other bedroom. But this morning, he is apparently walking around. And trust me, I know that he was dead. Uh, something else. I'm not sure what, but this film and what it represents is something that we feel, and I feel that you do as well. It's worth fighting for. So, what are you, what are you saying? You're saying that was real? Somewhere? But not here? It might be. How did you... How did you find this? Where'd it come from? It was given. <laughs> it... I don't know what, where it came from. It was... Given to us by... Someone else. We were also... Very confused when we saw this, but... What it inspired the feeling of hope that is what matters, Officer Davis. That is what we can bring to the American people, and that is what we plan to do tomorrow. And y'all know, is bring that hope back to everyone here. Plenty of people have died to move this video to this point. Lives have been sacrificed for this reel. Uh, uh, can we, can we play that again? This time we'll go over and shut the curtains. As many times as you need, Mr. Davis. As the curtain shut, you guys watch through the film again, watching footage from the beaches of Normandy, through the airstrikes, through the fire bombing of German cities, and eventually the celebrations in the streets of the United States, and PE Day, and then Germany surrenders. Charles Davis watches intently. He can RPS out. Towards the end of the video, as Charles is watching and you are watching alongside him, you turn and see his face as you just see a man kind of breaking. As he looks in the crowd of these people celebrating the end of the war and celebrating the fact that Germany had surrendered you see tears begin to well up in his eyes. And he's trying to control them at first, but after a moment, he breaks and has to cover his eyes for a moment and compose himself. That's... He walks over and kind of puts a hand on his shoulder, or on his, on his shoulder. That's... My... My son was there. My son's there. I'm... Sorry you lost your son, but... With this film... We can make sure... That hopefully... No more sons have to die like that. He 
just Things could... go for it, Sim. Hopefully, the sparks something from the people. Hopefully. Stopping the Nazi Empire from growing. Hopefully, corrects what wrongs have been done. And uh, I think we'll send it there tonight. All right. Sounds good. video. <laughs> Woo!